Hi everyone, Kim Berry here with Kim's DIY Tribe. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here. Like, subscribe, and today we are going to make a Valentine's heat transfer vinyl placemat. It's my daughter's first married Valentine's Day and I already made myself a set, so I thought it'd be fun to make her a set to celebrate her first Valentine's Day in wedded bliss. So for those of you who are new to Cricut or Design Space, or maybe you got one for Christmas, this will be an easy tutorial to show you how to make something really fabulous and no SVG needed, just your Design Space. So let's get started. I've opened up the Cricut Design Space and we're going to go to Shapes. Because it's Valentine's Day, we're gonna make a heart. And here are all the shape op options that you can use. So I'm gonna pull up a basic heart. It tells me it's 3.2 inches wide by 3.1 inches tall. Here is a locked button. This means that this heart shape right now, if I enlarge it, will do it proportionately. If I take the lock and click it, it will unlock the proportions so that I can warp or twist it to make it really tall and skinny or really big and fat. And since it's a placemat, I kind of am opting for a wider, fatter type heart. So I'm gonna work with this a little bit here. I want it to be about 10 inches wide and about six and a half to seven inches long. Once I get it kind of where I want it, I can go back and click on that lock to lock it and now size it more proportionally so it doesn't just keep getting um, wider. I can make it a little bit longer, closer to the seven inch mark. All right, so there's my heart. Now I wanna put text on there to slice away, meaning when I'm done, the Cricut will cut away the words that are sliced out of the heart, allowing the fabric of the placemat to show through my vinyl. It's a really neat technique for t-shirts and placemats. I'm using a font called Brusher. It's one that I've downloaded for free from dafont.com. Of course, you can change the font and you can go in here and use the Cricut fonts. When you see all, that means all your Google fonts, any that you might have uploaded from other font sources, like I said, like dafont.com or some of the others. It also gives you all the Cricut fonts and you know if they're Cricut because it'll have a fee beside it. And that's what they charge you. It's a lifetime. I mean, you have it to use as much as you want, but you have to pay for them or they come with part of their monthly subscription service um, to Cricut Access. And you may wanna do that, it may be worth it to you. I like to use Defonts for free, or the ones that came on my computer loaded from um, HP or Google, you can get some fonts that way. I go down and pick Brusher, I have all my free fonts here. So I've already picked it, and I'm gonna go down here to my text box and type in the font that I want, I'm gonna show you. I picked Brusher because it's a nice bold font to slice away. And it's highlighted in green because that's the one I've selected. So I'm just gonna reselect it as it's set up here. I'm gonna type in my font, my message, and we're gonna type in, I love Chad. And we're going to move, I'm gonna put my cursor right here and put Chad underneath. I'm gonna come up to alignment and center that because I want my text to be centered. Now, I'm gonna move the heart out of the way so I can work with the text. I'm gonna move the text box up here and I'm gonna use my grid lines to help me align it. I know I'm gonna want this bigger and I also want to ungroup it over here so that I can play with the letters individually and make them attached. There's nothing worse than all those letters being cut out as individual pieces when you want them to look like real calligraphy or script. So I'm gonna come and use the grid lines and line up my letters. Of course, if I wanted to play with the individual shape or size of these letters, again, you can unlock each letter and tweak it a little bit. If you wanted the V a little skinnier, you just didn't like the way the E was slanted, you can rotate, twist, make them thinner or thicker, however you want. I'm gonna move this V just over a tad. And then I'm gonna start on my Chad one here. And you can make the letters look as custom as you would like. If you don't want the C and H to connect, but you would rather have just the H-A-D connect, you can. It's all personal preference. There's really no right or wrong on this. It's just what you decide you would like to see and is as aesthetically pleasing to you when you're done. 
or to your gift recipient. Now see, I can play with this D if I wanted to make it bigger or smaller. Decide if I want a, to attach this C. And then I can highlight and group just this part and move it around a little bit to see where I want it. I could always make the chat a little bigger. And then I can group the whole box by clicking and dragging over the whole box. And I come up here and I hit group. It's right up here. And once you've done it, it'll kind of disappear. Then I want to make it bigger than I need it because I'm going to come down here and weld the letters together to make them all one unit so that the machine will cut them as one. Now, if you'll notice that A just filled in, that means that I need to stretch it out and make it a little bigger still. So come back here to this back arrow and it will unweld and move your so you have, you move your text box so you have more room to stretch it even further. If you ever get that black fill in, that's just what you need to do. And of course you can scroll it up and get it even bigger. I'm gonna move my heart down a little bit further, click back on my text box and really stretch that out. Now I'm gonna click weld again and hopefully that A will get to the point where it's not filling in because nobody wants an A that doesn't have a hole in it. There we go. Now we're gonna click on it and make it smaller because we didn't want it that big to begin with. And we're gonna move our heart up where we can work on it more easily. Anybody else had the cold or some of this funk that's going around? It's crazy, I'm just thankful it's not the flu or coronavirus, but I've had this cold for a couple of weeks. Now, that's why I sound a little hoarse. I'm gonna size this to where I want it to slice out of this heart. Of course, I could turn it and angle it. I've left it locked because I want it to be together like this. Now, the next part is up to you and what you want to do with your design. If you like it on the diagonal, you could leave it just like this. I think I will. And I'm gonna highlight the text box and the heart by clicking on shift. When I do that, let me do it again for you, just to make sure you saw it. I'm gonna click on the text box. I'm going to click shift on my keypad and click the heart as well. When I do that, a choice lights up down here, a choice that you don't see unless you can do it, and it's called slice. I'm gonna click the slice button, and this magic happens that I love with this Cricut. You pull away your, your words, and you can X them out, you pull away again and you can see the grid lines behind just like the fabric's going to appear when you cut out your heat transfer vinyl. The placemat I'm using is a pink and white striped placemat so I picked this pink glitter. It's going to have this heart and these letters will be cut out and allow that pink stripe placemat to show. One more thing I wanted to show you before you got started. When you go here and you click on the Make It button, you're going to have to remember that you want this design mirrored. So where it comes down here to this area here, it's a little toggle, you want to make sure that you click Mirror on your designs when you're doing HTV so that they are backwards on the screen so that when you weed everything away and flip them over to iron them on, they will be the correct way. So they need to look backwards while you're cutting so that they're ready to iron on and reverse. The only time you need to mirror is when you're using something on a t-shirt or iron on with the HTV type vinyl. Now we're gonna hit continue and it's going to go ahead and get ready to cut those out for me. I also wanted to show you this quick thing about heat transfer vinyl. Let me get some better lighting here for you. For the computer screen it's not so great but for other things that you need better lighting. It reflects off my computer screen. I've unwrapped my HTV and you can see how shiny it is and the light is glaring off of it. That side goes down on the mat. 
sometimes it'll look the same on both sides. Like some of the HTV will look pink and glittery on both sides, but one side will always be shinier. The shiniest side of heat transfer vinyl has to go to the mat and be mirrored because you're going to weed it and pull it off the mat and flip it over and iron it onto your fabric. So if you're new to Cricut, those are important tips that you would really need to know. For people who have a lot of experience, I know you already know this, but thanks for watching anyway. Okay, so here is the vinyl, the HTV, the pink glitter, all cut out, it's stuck to my mat. I used my big long mat. I switched it from the pink mat. And now we're pulling away the parts that we don't want ironed on to the placemats. So I'm gonna come in with my hook. Glitter HTV really needs kind of an aggressive type of weeding tool because it's hard, it's thicker than a lot of other vinyl. And you can see it's coming away. From the clear plastic protective part that we're going to use to iron it on. Here's the letters that we sliced away. We want to carefully come in and pull these out. It's good to have bright light so that you can see what you are doing to pull away these letters. And to be careful not to pull away things you don't want pulled away. like the center of an O or an A or an L. You don't wanna pull those parts away when you're doing your weeding. That's why I'm being very careful around this part here to make sure that I don't weed the things that I want to stay. So that the O, the center of this O, and the E, and this little part of the V are all in there. Now I'm not going to make you watch me weave the whole thing, but you get the idea of being careful to make sure that these center pieces are left intact. I'll be right back with the project ready to iron. Here's the final part of our HTV, and it's ironing it on. Get your iron nice and hot, and you want to apply firm pressure. You really have to press hard to get this adhered correctly, and you have to check if you're using what's called a cold peel or a hot peel HTV. If it's cold peel, that means you have to let this cool before you can peel off this clear protective coating. But if it's a hot peel, you need to peel it off right away. Usually the product itself will have that somewhere on the directions. If not, you can always go online and kind of research or peel a little bit and see. They tell you to press so hard that you can see the fabric fibers through your HTV, but with glitter vinyl, I have not been able to press my iron hard enough to see that. But on regular HTV, I actually can see the fibers through on my t-shirts and different other projects, stockings, things like that that I've made. 
You want to be careful not to shift your design while you're ironing. And I press it really hard. Obviously, no moisture, no steam. And this is after it was all weeded. As you can see what I was talking about, about leaving those pieces in for the E or the O, they're important when you're weeding to kind of think in reverse. If you peel this a little bit and need to re-iron, I would use parchment paper. Once the plastic has been peeled, it's not much good to you anymore. So just get a piece of parchment if you need to touch something up. All right, now let's see. I'm gonna peel a bit of this away just to see if it's a hot peel or a cold. This is a hot peel. And see how nicely this is coming off? If for some reason it didn't come off nice, that's when you just go use a piece of parchment. And if you get any little flecks on there, you can apply heat to the back sometimes and lift them or just with your fingernail, just lift it off. But there it is, it's all heated on there, ready for a Valentine placemat. To show you a quick easy way to get this jar lid ready for lasering all you need to do is unlatch the lock on the front open up your lid pinch right here and just pop this off now this metal ring will come off and you can easily fit it in your laser bed that way you can engrave it and none of this will get in your way or cause you problems One of the features that I love about the Glowforge laser is the trace feature. You can take something in your own handwriting and put it on whatever surface, acrylic or leather or whatever you're going to have in the bed of your laser and it will literally engrave it on there. It's part of the print feature. That's why they call it a Glowforge laser printer. But it's not printing with ink. It's literally burning it into the surface. And so it makes it super personalized and super custom. And I'm gonna be putting this on the bottom of my husband's Valentine trophy because it's better than a card, it's a trophy. So stay with me and I'll show you in just a few minutes the finished assembly. Okay, so we are going to finish assembling our trophy. I've got my stacked rings layered and glued here and they are just being compressed with this clamp. And so it's going to dry and I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these other parts together. I've already peeled off the masking on this one and marked it by taking my stacked rings and putting them all together and dipping it in ink and then pressing it through so I would know where to put hot glue to help anchor this in the end. I'm going to finish unmasking so you can see the paper masking coming off. It's almost the color of the wood but not quite. We're going to peel away all of this and as I showed you on the base that's where I put the trace and print feature 
in my handwriting to make it a little more special and personalized. It's one of the many features I really love about the Glowforge. It's so versatile. And of course, this whole thing could be done with acrylic. You could make an additional piece of leather or engrave a metal plaque. There's some metals that are great for engraving, especially when you think of trophies and awards. The masking prevents there being too much of a scorch or burn mark. It leaves it neater and cleaner, but it's not necessary on everything. There are lots of times that I don't mask. But as you can see, it kind of pulls away that little bit of charred edge. Usually I can wash it off just fine. All right, so this is the front side. Here's the back. Here again, this would have been another opportunity to put a handwritten message or something other, some other design that you wanted to add if there was another part to your trophy or category that you were giving this for. Think of like a Halloween costume contest or something like that. Then you could put most scary or most realistic, whatever your award would be. Okay, so there's the front. And I have a veneer piece that I custom made to go inside the score line. So I'm gonna peel off the 3M sticky. I've already peeled off my masking. And I'm gonna line this up so that it fits right inside the score line. And because it's already got the adhesive applied to it, all I have to do is press it down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the same with our ring here. This is gonna be on the top of the trophy. This piece slides in about that deep in those rings into the base. And so I wanna add another layer of this. Let me actually get this masking off first, just in case my edge overlaps. I don't want to lock down the paper masking and have trouble getting it off. So I better peel that off. Now if I was painting, I would leave that on to protect my wood surface from the paint. It's a great way to make your lines and edges clean and crisp and sharp. Paint markers are great, especially the Sharpie makes um, an oil-based pen that you can paint with, and it works really good for all these Glowforge projects. Now I'm going to put the walnut veneer ring on here as well. I'll put it on. And the score lines help you tremendously line these things up. This was a file I directly purchased from Glowforge. Okay. Now I'll release my clamp. And I want to have all these things ready to go because this is going to go just like this. when we're all done. And that's why I want the hot glue to anchor that last piece. Okay, so I'm going to put hot glue that will be hidden inside. The trophy. I'm gonna set my rings Side. 
going to put a little extra glue on the inside where it doesn't show. And this glue dries clear, so we won't see it anyway. But I don't want any shine or anything like that. Okay, I'm gonna take this, put it right straight down in, and just hold it steady for just a couple of minutes while that glue sets up. I'll do my final photo shoot and show you how it all came together. 